Good morning, my friends. It's Wednesday, October 2nd, and I'm here with you at the rising of the sun. I'm still in my kitchen with my beautiful canal in the background. We have a house full of college kids here taking refuge as their campuses are repairing from the storm. And this is, it's actually a plate from Italy from 1543 from the town of Faenza. And it is a depiction of the church triumphant, the church militant. So this is an example of the view of Christianity where you just parade with these flags of crosses and you destroy everyone who's not Christian. And if by some w reason they're willing to be baptized, then you enslave them or make them some kind of servants. Threatened by all other cultures the church misguidingly committed such violence. Unbelievable horror. And all in the name of Jesus, who never hurt another human being. So here we see these ships making their way in defeating their enemies, angels with trumpets above them announcing their arrival. As if it's some kind of a football game. To win, to defeat. In the book of Acts or today, <clears throat> Paul enters Jerusalem and after coming to Philip's house, he goes to James and meets with the elders. And the elders tell him, and he talks first about how many Gentiles have accepted Jesus and they're overjoyed. But then they say that the Jews are very threatened by Paul because they say that Paul is not really a Jew, that he doesn't advocate for circumcision or practice any of the laws. They're becoming defensive and they're getting violent or tending towards talking about hurting Paul because they're so threatened. So they advise that Paul go through rites of purification with some of the Jews and pay for their heads to be shaved. And he diligently does this for he is a practicing Jew. And this gives him a little reprieve. Why is it that we become so violent when we feel that our way of life is threatened? Why do we not have the capacity to think that God could do a new thing, a different thing? And that doesn't negate all the practices of faith that we've done in the past, but why would not God reinvent and do creative things? The coming of Christ threatened Judaism, just like Christianity would be threatened by other cultures later on. It is this tendency of humanity to hold on to our ways of life with such violence closing off our minds and hearts to the possibilities of innovation, of difference, of new influences. Let us not live our lives in fear, for fear leads to violence. Let us instead trust that just because something is different doesn't mean that we can't learn from that thing. And with Christ as our guide, bring in love a new relationship to life. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your forgiveness for all the violence we have done in the name of Christ, for the ways in which we have hurt human souls, beautiful children of God, because we were afraid, because we felt that there was no room for both of us on this earth. We thank you for scripture and for Jesus's life. We thank you for Paul, and we ask you to help us to learn and grow and encounter newness, not first by being threatened, but with open hearts and minds. We thank you for the gift of our lives, for every day is new. I will pause and let you give thanks for anything you're grateful for today.
Lord, we ask you to bless all who suffer, those who mourn and grieve, those who are ill, those who are lonely or struggle with mental illness, addiction, those who suffered trauma or loss. I will pause and let you speak aloud the names of people who need prayer in your life. Give us wisdom, O Lord, give us compassion. Help us to learn to become a different kind of human race, one that learns from each other and finds a way towards peace. All this we ask in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.